Hello YouTube, this is Stomping Formula coming to you from the Fellhammer on the 11th of January 2017. We are one day into 7.1.5 and today I'm going to share with you two different Vengeance Demon Hunter builds that I've been using since launch. These are the ones that I found to be the most successful and they're two... One build is really different from what I was running prior and the other build is kind of close to what I was running prior. So we're going to go over those real quick. So first thing I want to bring up is the build that I'm using now for Mythic Plus, most Mythic Plus situations, and for raiding. This is what I use, <clears throat> and I'll explain to you why I've selected what I've selected. These are what I use to have a low TMI. Uh, TMI is what grades tank on how spiky their hit points are going to be. You can do it in SimC or I believe Ask Mr. Robot also has TMI. It's this big long mathematical formula. So basically it comes down to how spiky in nature you are as a tank. So giving healers less of a heart attack. The first thing I've selected in row in the talent row for 99 level 99 is razor spikes and the reason why I selected razor spikes is because they buff the damage on it a, quite a bit and um, I've always wanted to use it because of the 50% snare in, uh, in mythic pluses especially in, like in bolstering raging necrotic stuff like that but the buff uh, the buff to physical damage really helps out with the damage you do from Shear and also the damage you do with Soul Cleave and it also helps with your auto attack damage which I'll get into another reason why that's pretty big later on down the tier list so for normal mythic pluses this is like non bolstering you know let's go with an easy a fix week is a good way to put it uh, I've chosen Fallout and I chose Fallout because I also chose Spirit Bomb and Soul Barrier this, uh, in AoE situations, this is almost absolutely going to give you a lot of souls on the, on the first uh, initial burst, as long as you're hitting a lot of mobs at one time. Now for <clears throat> the 102 talent area, I always take Fellblade. One, it's a gap closer. Two, it's 20 pain on demand. And for me, that's just, it's too good to pass up. That's a set of demon spikes. It's a fracture if you decide to spec into that, but I normally take um, I normally take Fellblade, uh, and, and in my opinion, Fellblade and Flame Crash is is kind of up to the person. It's not really a well, this is the better one and it's proven in Sims or anything like that. Fell Eruption does a does a pretty good amount of damage and it stuns, but I don't think it's really good for raid bosses or Mythic Pluses. It's I hate to say it, but it's kind of a a kind of a PV, PvP talent. Although stuns do help in some situations in Mythic Plus. Now for the 104 uh, thing, 104 talent row, I I pick Soul Rending most of the time, but I can also take Fracture as well. Now the main reason why I don't pick Fracture is one I never have. I'm never at a point where I'm looking for souls, and it just could be luck on my part. Another reason why I don't usually go with Fracture is because. I find that even just one more skill that I have to, to monitor, like Fracture, whenever I'm running this spec with uh, Soul Barrier and Spirit Bomb, believe it or not, it kind of overwhelms me as a person. I'm not saying that you can't run it that way, and if you're running short on souls, by all means, run Fracture. It's tw it's 20 pain less than it was in 7-1. It does a boatload of damage, which also helps with Spirit Bomb, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I pick Soul Rending because of the Fuel by Pain procs and also whenever I pop Metamorphosis, it's just kind of nice to have that extra leech. Um, in most A fixes, I'll run either Quicken Sigils or Sigil of Chains. Uh, usually I run Quicken Sigils unless it's a skittish A fix or if it's like Netherian Slayer with teaming with all the little rock thrower guys. Now whenever, and I'll get into harder affixes and which what I uh, and why I run Sigil of Chains mostly in the harder affixes. Now for the 108 talents, 
I, I picked Spirit Bomb. It, they buffed it quite a bit in 7.1.5. Uh, it does fire damage now, which means that it is affected by charred, by, uh, charred War Blades, and it does an AoE. It does an AoE burst. I don't remember exactly how large it is. It doesn't affect just one target. I want to say it's like five or six yards. It does an AoE burst out. So you do like that 105k fire damage, 103k fire damage non-crit to everything in that circle. So if you got eight mobs, it's a pretty big thing, and you're spreading that frailty debuff. And the frailty debuff got buffed by 5%. So that's another thing. It's really nice, and I believe it got buffed to last five, five seconds longer. I don't know. I didn't run Spirit Bomb in the last patch. But Spirit Bomb is really good for a low TMI because... What it does is, as long as you have a high amount of actions per minute, which Demon Hunters do, and you're dishing out lots and lots of damage, and this is any damage you get the 20% leech on. I believe it stacks with a 15% with fire. It may be multiplicative instead of additive. I don't know. I have to do some research on that. But it does stack with that 15%. So as long as you keep you know, pumping out the actions per minute, you're going to continually trickle heal yourself, and it's going to make it look like you're taking less damage, which in turn will have your health doing less and less spikes. And this actually works really well. I used this on Gwarm yesterday, Heroic Gwarm. Even though this isn't the spec I would have ran, but I used this on Heroic Gwarm yesterday and my health bar was moving like that of a bear tank. Um, another thing that I use now on the 110 tree for Mythic Pluses in most raiding environments is Soul Barrier. And I, I've been waiting on this. A lot of people I think that there's still a lot of people that are going to be running Last Resort everywhere. Last Resort definitely has its place. Don't let me don't let me tell you that it doesn't. And Demonic Influence, I'm sure, has its place, but I haven't found a good place for it yet. Right now, Soul Barrier and Last Resort just outweigh this by too much, and I think it's because this has a two-minute cooldown on it. I don't know. I, I just haven't found a good place to use this. It's, in my opinion, it's not very, it's not reliable enough to where you have to track your demon spikes and then you're like oh well now I'm in an ocean situation so I should use demonic influence I don't or uh, infusion I'm not real sure yet I haven't got I haven't got a lot of time using this yet with, with soul barrier you get a 12 second shield and your first shield is like 750k plus you know uh, what is it 80 83k per um, per lesser soul fragment it sucks up so Ideally, you want to use this with five soul fragments out. Personally, I don't think that you should only use it when you have five soul fragments out. I think that you need to use this off cooldown if you have the pain available. And I'll tell you why. Because that 99,753, which I think is affected by... <clears throat> excuse me. I think it is affected by attack power. I'm fairly certain that lower number is affected by attack power because whenever I was running a flask, it was 110k. It couldn't be re reduced below. But still at 99.7k, it's almost 100k. That's 10% damage reduction on anything that hits you for a million damage. So, very rarely do you run into something that's going to hit you for a million damage. In raids, yes, but usually in mythic pluses and stuff like that, no. So you're getting 10% damage reduction on anything that hits you for a million and then more percentage of damage reduction for anything that doesn't that doesn't quite make it to that 1 million spot. And uh, and you can keep feeding it as long as it's up. As long as you pop a as long as you pop a uh, fragment out and you hit soul cleave, as far as I know, it will continue to uh, continue to feed the soul barrier. So you'll get another, you know, you'll get another 83,000 absorb on top of that for every lesser, lesser soul fragment after that, which is really nice if you happen to get a fuel by pain proc. And you're using Sever, and then you hit Soul Cleave. Um, this and this, these two, uh, Spirit Bomb and Soul Barrier, they synergize really well with Fallout and Fracture. And I told you why I don't use Fracture, and that's just my personal belief. That I don't run into a Soul issue, a lesser Soul Fragment issue. And it's a little bit too much for me to handle, personally. But this is usually what I run for raiding, and, and it, it worked really well last night. I had had zero issues with this. The only thing that, it, that I had issues with was having to get used to the rotation, getting used to throwing the spirit bombs, getting used to popping the soul barrier. Um, I left something out about soul barrier I wanted to bring up. So, 
Let me go find a test dummy real quick that's not going to beat my face and back. And the reason why I believe Soul Barrier is such a good thing to use off cooldown, and I'm not saying use it all the time off cooldown, but you want to kind of judge where you're using it. Um, you can do, if you have enough haste, you can do three stacks of demon spikes back to back, right? So there's one. There's two. And then there's three. And now my demon spikes are on a long cooldown, right? So as soon as they run out, which they did already, is whenever you want to use Soul Barrier. Now you have another, what is it, 12 seconds? My demon spikes, that last that last fill-in is only like 11 seconds that I have to wait with for it on cooldown. So for that last, that last little bit of time, I'll have Soul Barrier active instead of having demon spikes up. And you can do that every, I think it's every second set of demon spikes. So that would help out a lot to change the spiky nature of the demon hunter in between demon spikes. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to what I'm using for uh, what is the harder mythic plus A fixes and raid, I mean not raid, but tank killing mechanics. Um, they, endure, they have, uh, I think every raid in this... Um, and this expansion so far has some sort of tank killing mechanic in it and this is going to help a lot so i stuck with razor spikes depending on if i'm doing uh if i'm doing a mythic plus or if i'm doing a boss fight or if i have ads or what i'll either take burning alive which this is really good for like bolstering and stuff like that now because it spreads a lot a lot better from what the tooltip is supposed to say um, Fallout, it's good to get that extra soul out. Again, again you have Fellblade, and Fellblade, again, it's just 20 pain on, on demand, and I really like that. Soul Rending, again, I'm taking this because I take end up taking Last Resort, and it works with Fuel by Pain, it definitely helps the Last Resort. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a raid with a tank killing mechanic, Quick and Sigils is probably better. But Sigil of Change is definitely better for like bolstering, raging, necrotic, things like that. Now, on this 108 talent tree is where I take a lot, a lot different of a path. I go to Fell Devastation, even though a lot of people are trying to steer away from it this expansion for some reason. I don't know why. It does a lot of damage, and it's all fire damage, and it does a huge heal. It's 831k on the heal, and you get the fire damage that you do on top of it, and that fire damage helps a lot. It helps a lot with um, the charred war blades. So I run uh, Fell Devastation, and then I also run Last Resort, and this is for the tank killing mechanics. This is like a messed up taunt on Ursoc. This is, uh, you didn't run far enough on Odin's Spear. You accidentally bolstered your last add and he has 15% hit points left and he's got like five stacks of bolstering. So this is this is for tank killing mechanics right here. <clears throat> and added up with the soul rending, it's going to help quite a bit. This is a lot similar to what I ran last, uh, the last patch cycle. Uh, but this works really well for survivability, I guess is the best way to put it. Instead of your TMI, your less spikiness, this is a huge survivability build. So keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments, please. I'm going to put my Twitch channel down in the comments, uh, down in the description below. It is twitch.tv slash stompingformula. Please stop by and come watch me play. I stream seven nights a week, um, 8 p.m. Eastern. To around midnight sometimes a little bit earlier I get off a little bit earlier than that but come by and I'll answer any questions I'm open to any suggestions on these builds this has only been out for a, a day I just wanted to show what I've been doing so if you have any questions just like I said stop stop by on my stream or drop them in the comments below thank you very much and have a nice day